And a one, and a two, and you know what to do. Spoon! I'm Jacob Mangley, you are watching Comics Corner, and today I could not be happier to talk about the Tick reboot. For those of you who don't know the Tick, or just found out about them because of the new Amazon series we're talking about today, I feel bad for you. Not in the hipstery, I know better than you because I eat granola and I think I'm better than everyone else. Else, even though my penis is literally con concave, because I eat organic and and I'm not a poor sad or sad shadow of a man sitting in his basement reviewing comic books. I may have been maybe going through a rough time lately. Anyways, the Tick was created in the late '80s by Ben Edlund, who you may know as the creator of Supernatural. Which I haven't seen, but I really have wanted to, and most people have good things to say, at least about the first few seasons, but I'm not going to judge a show I haven't seen. Not going to be that dick. Well, but yeah, that's where he got his start. The Tick was a big, was and really still is, a big blue muscly superhero is a parody of other big blue muscly superheroes from the Silver Age. What made him stand out is, especially going into the Dark Age of comics, shortly into his existence, even as Ben went moved on to other projects, which we'll get to in a second, trust me. He, he was just a big blue ball of fun in a giant parody of superhero comics. Along to his side, no matter the adaptation, is his best friend and sidekick, Arthur. The white moth guy here. Who I can make do this. His catchphrase is not the face. Despite that, he's much needed brains to ticks over enthusiastic and sometimes dim witted brawn. There they protect the nameless city of the city. Because that's the joke. And fight crime. That's the basic premise for everything. Thing but the reboot. The reboot still has all that, it's just a bit different. The Tick has been adapted two other times. The, the most definitive version of the Tick, and yes, that includes the comics, shockingly, so the, is an animated series done by Ben Edlin and featuring Chris McCulloch and Doc Hammer on, Jack, uh, on writing staff i.e. the guys who would later go on to create the Venture Brothers, one of my favorite cartoons of all time. McCulloch would also write at least one Tick miniseries, which has been called one of the best, and was well loved. Despite the cartoon's massive popularity, Fox canceled it after third season and to make way for more Power Rangers spinoffs because the world hates me sometimes. It really does. Have I mentioned that rough lately? Anywho, Fox did try to resurrect the Tick as a live-action sitcom starring the one, the only, Patrick fucking Warburton. Also ironic that he'd go on to work on the Venture Brothers. Tick just make everyone work on the Venture Brothers? I don't want to work on the reboot. I want to work on the Venture Brothers. Everyone should. Anyways, it lasted about eight episodes, and I'll cover it another time, and three of the episodes didn't air. Air, so that's a sad story, but it was basically, as one review apparently called it, according to the back of my DVD box, Seinfeld with superheroes, which is really 100% accurate. It's basically a superhero sitcom, and it was great, it's just... It was Fox during the 2000s. You're not getting out alive. You really aren't. Seriously, as far as Family Guy's fallen, they're coming back to the... to Peter Griffin citing off all the things Fox canceled, good and bad. 
shows just how fucking awful the network work was at actually retaining shows at the time. Anywho, you don't want to hear about now all the backstories out of the way. A few decades later, after Ben Edlin got over kind of resenting his creation, became mega famous, did at least two shows. Well, okay, mega nerd famous, but still, that's good. He's returned to the tick. With one of the first major non Netflix non animated TV shows. I do say non-animated, because there have been at least two different superhero TV shows, which I will cover, uh, cover, and both were parodies, but, well, I do think Supermansion comes close, this is the best by far. But before I can tell you that story, well, let's dig into the premise. Huh. Got something to dig in with. So, our story follows Arthur Everest, a mild, meek accountant. Who, who suffered horrible childhood trauma when, when arch villain the Terror crashed, crashed the Flag Five, the superhero spaceship into his dad after killing them, then stole his ice cream, then laughed in his face, and it ended up on the cover of Time. This is both utterly hilarious and a good indication of how, how screwed up uh, poor Arthur is. Arthur starts to put some pieces together and figures out that the Terror, thought dead after a confrontation with local Superman, Man XP, professionally on douchebag. I don't get that a lot with Superman XPs these days. And first superhero Superion believes he's alive and goes on a hunt to prove it. Thing is, no one believes him. His sister Dot has spent most of her life trying to keep Arthur from from the mental institution and believes it's just a result of the incident. The police believe the same and just and only let him go after capturing him trespassing because because they feel bad for him. Just no one believes him. So what changes? Well look at the title and you tell me. Yes, the tick shows up in Arthur's life sees his evidence, and realizes he's really got it together. And yeah, and despite this setting being a lot grimmer and grimier and almost a parody of the Dark Knight saga and... saga and the Netflix Marvel shows... shows... shows he's ever, every bit as boisterous, happy, and carefree as usual, and recruits Arthur to help him fight crime, even giving Martha a nifty moth suit, suit, which is a lot more high tech than most adaptations. Instead of just basically being spandex that covers his fat folds, folds, which I'm with you, buddy. It's a bulletproof suit with goggles that's wanted by the Pyramid Gang, the local old crime, crime no good nicks. Their enforcer, Miss Lynn, and their boss, Ramsey. He's... Arthur also, due to this, and due to investigating the terror, finds himself self-stalked by the, by the vigilante overkill. Basically, what would happen if the Punisher and, and Deathstroke fucked on a pool table, produced a son, and he... He decided to go into one daddy's business while taking another daddy's clothes. So now, Arthur tries to duck Destiny as Destiny hunts for him, and the Tick tries to both protect him and get him to become the hero he knows he's destined to be. Honestly, yeah, as I said, this reboot is awesome. Just really damn good. As I said, it's a bit more grounded, but it's still the tick. It's kind of a nice halfway point between the cartoon I mentioned, which is just off the wall levels of insane. Insane, and apparently once included tick punching a black hole, carving a hole in the moon, having his mustache turn against him, having to travel inside a giant dinosaur man. 
and and in one of my personal favorite episodes, if not my single favorite, had a giant anthropomorphic whale named Blowhole walk around around every couple of years, and have everyone just treat this as a normal thing, thing like our like the recent eclipse or the Northern Lights. Just a giant whale walking around. You got any more trout, Billy? You know I don't, Fred. You got any more fucking my wife? Well, maybe if you actually paid attention to her. Oh, look. Look, kick the man eating cow. But yeah, the whale and the casualness stuff, it's basically the weirdness here. You got a giant, really huge man, as they call him. Uh, interview with a talking dog who used to be a sidekick and was christened by his master who was a holy crusader now believes there is no god and uh, said a hardcore vigilante I mentioned again Deathstroke Punisher pool table has a talking bow voiced by Alan Tudyk I want a talking bow voiced by Alan Tudyk god damn it I don't have to kill people for it just please give me my Tudyk boat. Please. Basically, the nuts is still there. It's just grounded in reality. Arthur's been mentally troubled, and at first, as was hinted in the pilot, he thinks the tick isn't real. And the reveal that he's not, and he just shows up behind him while Arthur's talking to his sister Dot, and she stares at him wondering, what the fuck am I looking at? Is great. Well, say he's not packed full of superheroes. It is given the explanation that with crime down, there hasn't been as much need. So it's basically just our three, our two heroes and Overkill vigilante wise in the city. It also shows the actual consequences. Well, the Tick beats up heroes and Overkill slaughters or maims them. Dot works on a back alley doctor to earn some extra money for her roller derby team. And just in general. And we get to see the actual effects of what the tick does to these moves. Also a nice little undercurrent and connection between three of our main characters. Miss Lynn, as I meant. Miss Lynn, who I haven't really gotten into, is the terror's right hand and feels unfulfilled in her current job. Overkill, apparently, though, in this first batch of episodes, we don't won't find that out, and I'm sure we will in the next one, has a vendetta against the terror, same as Arthur, or in one, and fell empty without his revenge until he found out he might be alive. And Arthur obviously has issues with his father and hasn't really, to the point he hasn't even really gotten hugged over it, with a really touching scene, as well as hilarious, seeing the second episode and the Tig Tick just give him a hug because after he hears his backstory. Well, there's not a lot of effects, unlike the Fox series I mentioned, the second one, not the one with the man eating cow and the and the talking whale. They had to do everything off screen. Amazon, while not giving them a huge budget, gives them enough that the ticks punches some guys through walls. Arthur's suit can actually be shown flying more than once. And again, there's a green screen giant man and a talking dog in there. Not the most complicated or best effects ever. They work for what the series has, and they're still fairly... They don't really suck you out of the world or anything. Character-wise, the series is also on point. I'm sorry I can't remember all the actors' names. I really should have memorized them. But Peter Seneferco is... Senef Peter S. is the main... Because I can't pronounce his name like a dumbass. Is just amazing. I was seriously worried. I knew Patrick Warburton was a bit too old to play the part. And that's sad because he was really good in it despite having a really awful costume. But Peter Sinifrowitz, god damn, is he on par with the last two. Just as good, but bringing in basically kind of a combination. He has Towns and Coleman, who voiced him in the cartoons, really good enthusiasm and light and everything. 
But he also is kind of a, sometimes just sort of saying weird shit and just letting it in a very casual manner the way Patrick Warburton did while making it all his own. He also gets surprisingly a few little dramatic moments. Nothing over dramatic, like the tick winding up. My parents are dead! They were killed by, by Barry! Blood everywhere! No. All it is is that the tick literally doesn't know anything about his past, which naturally bothers Arthur. And when asked if his suit is part of him or just a costume, he really can't answer. And it bothers him. It's done incredibly well. Though he's mostly there to be big, boisterous, and encourage Arthur on. Oh, and, and basically be every bit as fun. It's a nice breath of energy in a very dour landscape. Arthur, who's, Arthur is also just really well acted. With his actor really getting in the character. Well, he's panicky as usual, given there's more real stakes. Like, it's not just shrugged off like most superhero parodies, including the other versions of the series of Damage. He has every reason to be scared and reject this. He tries to give back the moth suit to the criminal so they won't kill him, and eventually realizes he's in too deep, as well as that he's probably right about the terror. Then even when he dives in, he just wants to report it. The show is his journey from that to a true hero, you know, fighting for her truth, justice, and all that good stuff. And then you also get why. The Tick has the power of a bunch of men, at least 20 men, a bu a sweaty bus stop full of men. One of my favorite Tick lines, I swear. Arthur's just a skinny guy in a suit that may be bulletproof and allow him to fuck raw up buildings. Yeah, he's also likable because you get why he wants to take down the terror. He was traumatized, and he slowly realizes he can do more with this up until the series climax. Well, the first six episodes. Again, this is just this is just part of a season one. Oh, I'm not a huge fan of how they did the cliffhanger, and the team did do a good job explaining why they divided it in half to keep interest up and keep people talking about it rather than just digest it all in once gulp it down and hope people like it here people can talk about it and they may even get renewed faster because of it we'll see but yeah enough talking about that in the middle of the characters dot is probably the best she's ever been dot is an interesting case as she's arthur's sister and she's also one of the only characters who've been in all four adaptations thus far. I'm not kidding. She was in the comic. She was in the cartoon where she married said giant dinosaur man. And she married, and she was in the TV series where his family locked him up in a basically the superhero equivalent of a pray the gay away type place. Here, she's just trying to support him and keep him out of danger, but eventually realizes that he's not going to keep out of danger. He's only doing it for the right reasons. But you can also understand, she lost her dad. She has lots of issues. She has issues with that, too, even if not nearly as many as, as Arthur for obvious reasons. So, of course, she's not going to be incredibly excited her brother's off risking his life with an insane blue man. And who, who's far more bulletproof than him. But she comes around, and unlike a lot of similar characters in shows like this, who are just, wah, 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 you should give up, or wah, 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 me, 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 or I don't know any, what's going on. Instead, she's just a far more bit likable, and doesn't take forever to find out about things. Cough, I wish that's gone. That'll be fair, I... I haven't seen seasons two and three and hope she's improved. Just Jesus. Anyways. Miss Lynn is a really interesting character. She's basically the sort of main villain. While the terror is set up as the big bad and to be alive after all, 
Miss Lynn goes through an emotional journey. She's currently working for Ramsey's, who we'll also talk about here. He's basically a snooty new crime boss who has everyone put the eye of Bast on their, their face as a as a symbol. As annoyed Lent really isn't sworn loyalty to him. And was actually treated well by the terror. One of my favorite scenes of season one is her and the terror, played by Jack Earl Haley to perfection, talking and him talking about how she killed two planes loads of his minions because they insulted her name. He points out that killing people's fine, but in one of the funniest lines of the season two, you don't kill people because because uh, they make fun of you. You kill people because it's fun. And gives her a grounding bracelet, genuinely to help her, and was the first person to help her actually control her power. Granted, that's part, I'm going to teach you how to, how to do bad right, but first you're going to need to wear it, be able to wear black. Like, just lines like that are hilarious. She also has an ex-husband named Daryl, who is the terrorist tech support and lives in the, lives with her and refused to buy her out of the apartment. Artman and leave is just both just a giant hipster douchebag with a man bun, but it's just hilarious thing. Yeah, to suppose the last major character outside of the terror, but the last major character in the present is Overkill, who again Punisher, Deathstroke, pull table, right up his butthole. But yeah, Overkill's a great character, but he's just both a parody of those vigilantes, the Arrow version of Green Arrow, and uh, even lightly of of Netflix Daredevil, and especially Dark Knight Batman. Just all that kind of rolled in there, but given killing people, so the characters have a reason to mock him. His actor does a great job, and he actually, the character is, while still a murdering douchebag, does have a point a lot of the time, just about being a coarse asshole. Plus, again, he's offset by Danger Boat, who I'm now naming, by uh, Alan Tudyk, who's his roommate slash room, and it helps him mostly because he has to live with the guy, and is probably the most stable one of the Ticks, Ticks trio. That is saying a lot about them that the boat's the most healthy one there. And then finally, the terror himself is just played amazingly by Jack Earl Haley. Like, he's playing a wheezing old man, and the terror, like Dodd, is one of the only characters who's been in all four adaptations. Like, it's just her, the tick, Arthur, and the terror. But here he's played for serious, and you do get him as this confident villain, but he's also hilarious as hell. Just his scenes are just crackling with hilarious, with just great gags, like that first scene I mentioned, which is just hilarious as it is horrifying for poor Arthur just because they pile on his pain, or just his lines during the set, or other stuff. I won't spoil exactly when he returns, though, yeah. I am kind of spoiling the returns at all, but, well, you, they hired a fairly well-known, if not, like, A-list actor to play him. He shows up in the main credits, and the main character believes he's alive. But, odds are, yeah, he's actually alive. So the how, why, and everything of it, I'll leave up to you. But overall, the Tick reboot is just fucking amazing. Really good stuff. Well, the Netflix Marvel shows, which ironically I don't watch Defenders, are good and all. This is a nice shot of light. While it's still dark and stuff, it's not to a depressing degree. The pilot was a little depressing, but once the Tick's regular and in the series for most of the runtime with the rest of the other five episodes, it's really a fun ride. And even in the first one's not that bad. It's just overall really good, really well written, has great character development, great acting, and just everything you'd want from a superhero show. Uh, show. 
and more. It's funny, well done, and it's 100% the tick. And sometimes that's all you can ask for. I'm Jacob Mangley. Until next time, spoon! Huh. I wonder if I should do something about... Huh. Something about this next time. Huh. Let's see that.